microphone number three. Speak uh, against uh, or in favor of the substitute motion. Go ahead, um, uh, fathers and brothers, um, teaching elder Greg Johnson from Missouri Presbytery. Um, I was not raised in a church or synagogue. I was raised by an atheist father in an atheist home, and I shared that atheism. And I was his gay son. I knew I was gay at age 11. Uh, I was in a Baptist fellowship hall at a cousin's wedding when I realized this was in the summer of 1984 that I could not take my eyes off of one of the groomsmen. And I remember feeling a massive weight of shame. And then when I noticed that everybody was staring at me, I felt fear. It was that same day at that same wedding that somebody explained that the groomsmen had a brother that the family had disowned because he was gay and they were Christians and they could not tolerate somebody that disgusting. And that was the day I realized that Christians hate gay people. By God's grace, he pursued me. And in college, I became a Christian and trusted Jesus. I was baptized in a PCA church at age 20 and the next uh, year enrolled at Covenant Seminary, not because I had any interest in going into ministry, that took another decade, but because I wanted to catch up and make up for lost time. And I had read every single book that R.C. Sproul had written and purchased all of his VHS audio tapes and memorized them all. And I was still hungry. Um, at this point, I'm 46 years old and uh, still same-sex attracted. My orientation is not changed, and for those who are exclusively same-sex attracted, who are men, we don't know for certain of even, I've, I have, I've talked to every head of every ministry and can't find a single instance of same-sex attraction going away. And so where that leaves me at age 46 is I'm a 46-year-old virgin who has never so much as held hands. I've never had a romantic embrace I have never hugged romantically. Uh, I have had a history of struggle with pornography, of which I am now 15 years sober. Uh, I am mortifying my flesh every single day, and yet that has a cost. Jesus has washed me, and yet I'm in the fight for my life every single day, and I don't regret that one bit. But the cost is this. The cost is that there are no family photographs on my mantle because I have no family. The cost is I know what it's like to sit alone at home in my apartment on Christmas Day because I have no family. The cost is that someday I will have to be buried, not cremated, because there will be no one to receive my ashes because my line ends with me. And I don't regret that. I accept that as a calling to suffer for the sake of Jesus, who says that those who give up fathers and mothers and husbands, wives and children and brothers and sisters for my sake will receive a hundred times more. And I love Jesus and I want to serve him and I'm willing to suffer for him because it's that beautiful. And yet friends, when I read article seven of the Nashville statement, it hurts. Because Article 7 says that it is a sin to adopt a homosexual self-conception. And we don't do that for any other people group. We don't tell alcoholics it's a sin to conceive of yourself as an alcoholic because drunkenness is a sin. It's the beginning of learning to manage your alcoholism and obedience to Christ so it doesn't define you. We don't tell paraplegics that they should conceive of themselves as able-bodied because that's God's ideal. Uh, we wouldn't tell an infertile woman that she needs to conceive of herself as fertile and she's unbelieving to conceive of herself as infertile because that's not God's design. Friends, I'm fallen, I'm broken, and Jesus has washed me and saved me. And my prayer is that you would consider the damage that will be done to people like me when Article 7 says that it's a sin to acknowledge our brokenness and our shame and the suffering and sorrow that goes with that, my prayer is that we will instead do the hard work of coming up with something biblically nuanced, theologically sophisticated, missionally sensitive, and pastorally sensitive so that people like me don't have to go through all of the suffering I had because their pastors will be well-equipped to love
people who are broken and same-sex attracted and waiting for glory. Thank you, brothers. Microphone number three, for what purpose do you rise? Gentlemen, order, please. Microphone number three. To speak on, the, on behalf of the substitute. Microphone number six. Kevin DeYoung, Teaching Elder, Central Carolina Press.